What's going on guys? You're watching The Hungry Handgunner. I'm Nick and today I want to go over some of the top firearms misconceptions that I've been hearing lately, seeing lately. Uh, a lot of these have popped up on gun groups, on Facebook and things like that. So without further ado, let's get started on these and by all means if you believe these, um, there's no shame in that. But if you have the opportunity to learn and not better yourself, that's where the shame comes in. One of the biggest misconceptions I often hear is that it only takes one shot to stop somebody in a self-defense uh, situation, things like that. Um, it might and it might not. I think that basing your training and your practice and your drills off that one shot scenario is a recipe for disaster. I think that it is uh, focusing on the best possible outcome in a very bad situation where things obviously have not gone according to best possible thus far. So I think it's important to uh, realize that, especially with handguns, you basically have three types of stops. You have a psychological stop, which is the, oh shit, I've been shot. I don't want to be shot anymore, so I'm going to quit doing whatever I'm doing. Uh, by all accounts, that is the most common. And then you have the central nervous system uh, stop, which is pretty self-explanatory. You've shut down the central nervous system. And then you have incapacitation due to exsanguination or bleeding out, uh, loss of blood volume leading to just unconsciousness and uh, not being able to fight anymore. So uh, can all of those be done with one shot? Yeah. Um, is the likelihood high? No. Uh, handguns are pretty piss poor people stoppers anyway. 80% uh, of people shot with a handgun do survive. So there is that. Um, I mean, treat them with respect. I'm not saying, you know, go out here and be reckless, but I think it's important to realize that sometimes uh, the mere sight of a gun may be enough and other times you may need a reload. So uh, practicing for a worst case situation, practicing um, multiple shot drills, controlled pairs, failure to stop drills, um, target transitions, things like that. I think that's very important. Um, often this particular belief is brought up in defense of carrying something with limited capacity, a five shot J-frame revolver, things like that, uh, which, you know, if that's what you got, run it. Um, by all means, I'm not here to tell you that you shouldn't carry one of those, but I think it's important to look at the reality of the potential situations that you are, in theory, preparing for. So yeah, it may take one shot, it may take more. The next one may hurt some people's feelings, but there is this misconception about uh, hyper ammo, ammo that is heavily marketed, things like the RIP ammo, the fragmenting copper uh, projectiles. I think RIP stands for radically invasive projectile, not rest in peace. Uh, these things look scary. They're often really hyped up. The ballistics gel test, Kind of looks impressive if you just ignore things like penetration and just focus on expansion and fragmentation. So um, there are authorities on this subject. I am not one, but there are authorities that do some pretty thorough testing. There's the FBI minimum qualifications. It has to penetrate to this depth. It has to go, you know, expand to this diameter. Uh, these are things that are important, and these are things that I think you should factor in when choosing your defensive ammo, not just who has the flashiest packaging and coolest high-speed footage in bear gel on YouTube. So inevitably somebody's going to ask what I carry. I carry federal HSTs. Um, that is not the only acceptable self-defense loading out there. There are several, but my two, uh, if I had to pick two, would be the HST and the Spear Gold Dot. So uh, weigh in the comments with what you carry and why. The next misconception I often hear is that carrying a weapons mounted light is stupid because that is going to show people where to shoot at you uh, or where you are to shoot at you, reveal your location, things like that. Um, there is a doctrine, uh, a school of thought called light discipline, learning how to use light effectively while mitigating a lot of those risks. You can pick that up at low light class. Uh, you can Google it and self-teach yourself a lot. Uh, basically using the light in such a manner that it aids you, doesn't aid the enemy combatant. And the other thing is, if a gun is pointed at somebody with a thousand lumens of light, or even 500 lumens of light at a substantial amount of candela, that is not going to be a pleasant thing to look into. And I would challenge anybody uh, that thinks that that is not a big deal at self-defense distances, um, get one of those weapons mounted lights, take it off the gun, don't point the gun at yourself, and uh, have somebody point it at you from, you know, 10, 15 yards even. I don't think that you would be able to get a sighted picture, let alone look at the light directly. Um, I know I wouldn't, so unless you guys have some sort of weird vision that lets you do that, 
largely not a factor with today's lights and their light output. So uh, carry a light. It's in, I, I would much rather know that if I am going to shoot at somebody that that person actually needs to be shot at or that uh, if I think the situation has started to resolve itself and then it hasn't, say a person pulls out a weapon, um, I would like to be able to know so I can make the appropriate decision. The light helps with that. I don't think they're going to be able to return fire at me accurately. And yes, they could get lucky, but they could get lucky even without the light. So I want every possible advantage in that situation. Magazine capacity slash uh, carrying a spare magazine, spare speed loader. There is a, this kind of goes back to the, it only takes one misconception. Um, carrying an extra magazine doesn't mean that you think you're going to get in a running gunfight in downtown wherever. Carrying an extra magazine just says, hey, I have X number of rounds in my gun, be that 7 or 20, um, and I want more rounds. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're planning on getting in a huge gunfight. Um, there are some malfunctions with semi-automatics that are very easily remedied by dropping that mag, putting a new one in, and going to town. You can worry about whatever hung up in the magazine later. Uh, a bad magazine is going to turn your semi-automatic into a single-shot gun. Probably not what anybody really wants to, you know, this isn't the 17 and 1800s anymore. Not really what somebody wants to potentially defend themselves with. So carrying extra rounds isn't a, isn't a sign of paranoia, it's a sign of being prepared, right? Uh, statistically, you are unlikely to need your gun. Statistically, you're unlikely to need a reload if you need your gun. But if we're just going off statistics and we should all leave our guns at home, um, and just carry a big ass first aid kit and a fire extinguisher everywhere, everywhere we go because those things are statistically more likely to happen. So when you, um, you know, next time you hear somebody say they're carrying a mag, if you come at them and say, hey, you're being paranoid, you're wrong. You don't really know that person's line of thinking. You don't know their past experiences, their training that has led up to that decision. So um, think about that just a little bit. I carry an extra mag. Most of the people I know carry an extra mag and it has nothing to do with the idea that I might need more rounds. It is to primarily as a malfunction remedy, um, but having the extra rounds would be nice if I needed them, obviously. One may, of all of these, I think this one may be the one that really upsets people. Shotguns are not the magic cure-all for home defense. Um, a lot of people think that a shotgun is going to make up for lack of practice, uh, lack of skill, lack of knowledge, or just that it has this massive intimidation factor. Uh, the intimidation thing is going to be wildly up for debate. But a shotgun does take practice to know how to run well, especially in a high-stress situation, uh, particularly if you have something like a pump action. You, you have several different actions that need to go into being able to fire a subsequent round. So that's not something that a novice can pick up and uh, most likely run well. The other thing is people think you don't need to aim with shotguns. I've demonstrated that in previous videos where you do. Uh, that shot does not spread out as fast as you think it does and if it did spread out to the extent that people think that you can just blindly point it in that direction that is a liability those projectiles are going to go through other interior walls potentially hit other people maybe even exterior walls depending on what you have loaded in the shotgun so am i saying that a shotgun is a bad choice for home defense no um, i think it's a valid choice i think that if you're willing to put in the time uh, patterning your shot shells and figuring out what load's going to work best for you uh, I think it's an excellent option. I think that the versatility of a shotgun is not to be understated, but I do think there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding the use of one. Um, the biggest one is, you know, if you just rack the shotgun, the bad guy's going to go away. Maybe, but maybe not. And do you really want to base your home defense plan on the hopes that an audible deterrent is going to be enough? Uh, if you want to consider that a step, fine, but there is a good chance uh, that you're going to have to do more than just rack the shotgun. So get out, practice with it, practice some target transitions, learn where the shot shells are patterning at different distances, especially distances you'll find inside your home or outside your home if you live in an area where uh, you might have other homes near you if something were to happen outside the home and you grab the shotgun. So this isn't an all-inclusive list. If you have uh, some other common gun misconceptions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And maybe I'll do another episode later on on these. So stay safe, keep shooting. I'll see you next time.